Once you get your adapter plate done, you're still going to need one more custom part, and that's going to be your coupler. That's what you need to get the drive shaft from the electric motor connected up to the driven shaft of the transmission, and that's going to be the coupler. Now this car is not going to use a clutch and a flywheel at all. Instead, it's just going to use a coupler. Now I actually ended up doing two different styles of coupler. They each seem to have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, how I started off was using a two-part spider coupler. I have an example of one right here. This is a Lovejoy brand. And it's a pretty simple sort of a thing. What it is, is it's a chunk of metal with a hole in the middle for your drive shaft or your driven shaft. Uh, it has a set screw to tighten down uh, a key and a keyway. And then it has kind of three big fingers sticking out of there. And then you have another one that goes on to whatever you're trying to drive. And that can have a different size shaft on it. So it's a good way to match up uh, two different sizes of drive shafts. And still it has that same set screw for the keyway and three fingers. So it's a two-parter, but between the two, you have sort of a spacer. So you put that in, and then the whole thing can go back together. Now what's neat about this is you can have a little tiny bit of misalignment from uh, the one shaft to the other. They can kind of be a little tiny bit off axis, and it's two parts. So you could mount uh, one thing, uh, for example, the transmission, you could have that mounted in the vehicle like that. You could bring the motor up to it, slide it on there, and then mount the motor in place. And that's actually one of the reasons why I had that uh, access hole cut in the bottom of the transmission is so that when I got the motor up there, I'd be able to fit a hand through and make sure to get these two parts lined up and then bolt the motor into place. Uh, also in case this little middle spacer fell out or got a little misaligned or whatever, uh, I'd have access for in there. And then also double check to make sure that all these set screws were tightened down. Now for the coupler itself to actually go onto either the motor or the transmission. Remember both of those shafts were splined and these here are only designed for smooth round shafts with a, a keyway in them. So what we did was on a lathe took a connector kind of like this, uh, cut it out to the right size, cut a step in it, and then we used the splines from the original clutch plate. So to do that, we drilled out the rivets, got down to just the little middle spliny part, put that in the lathe to trim it down a little bit so that it would actually fit right inside on here and came up with a piece like this. Now this is actually one half of my original adapter. As you can see, it's got some damage on it. And that's because I, I, I really didn't have the right equipment. I ended up basically bench pressing the motor up into the car and pushing it up against the transmission with one hand and tightening down all the bolts with the others. And because of that, I never really had it quite perfectly aligned just right. So when I was using that adapter, the car always kind of rattled a little bit while I was driving it. And when I'd start and stop, I could hear a little bit of slop in that adapter. And slop is always a bad thing when it comes to mechanical stuff. And eventually, the two halves sort of started forcing them, themselves apart from each other. And when that happened, it started taking wear and tear on these two fingers until eventually it just plain snapped. And here you can see where uh, some of the metal just came right out of there. So later on, I went instead to a solid coupler. So that's why you can see that there's no splines in here. Uh, the spline for the motor side originally came from the tail shaft. This motor had a tail shaft and the splines on the tail shaft were the same as on the drive shaft and there was a drum brake on the tail shaft. So similar to what I did with the clutch plate, I got just the little splined part out of the middle there, and that involved uh, taking out a few, a few bolts and putting that part on the lathe to get down to just the splines, uh, cutting into this coupler with, uh, with the lathe, setting it in there, and then welding it in place. I don't have a welder. I took it over to a local welder, gave the guy 20 bucks, and he welded all the pieces together for me. So to make a solid coupler to replace the failed two-part coupler, Centering is very important. So what we did was we got a block of steel, and I'll just uh, show you by example with this little chunk of wood. Just took a little plate of steel, welded the one spline right into it, put that in the lathe, 
trimmed it down to size, cut a hole also on the lathe so it's perfectly centered that would fit the other spline, put that in there and welded it. And then what we had was the correct splines on either side and a little metal plate in the middle, put that whole thing on the lathe, spun it down so it was basically just a nice cylinder, a nice shape like that. And then my friend Rich built up the weld on there and jacketed it all in stainless steel to get a single nice solid piece coupler with the right splines on both ends for the transmission and the electric motor. Now because I've got that access port uh, built into the transmission, right now we can go look at that coupler as it is in the car. I'm going to use a mirror to point the camera down into it so we can see that. So now the car is jacked up in the air and I've got a mirror on the ground so that we can uh, see underneath nice and easily. And from left to right you can see the yellow there is the electric motor, the silver band there is the aluminum adapter plate, and to the right of it is the transmission. And here's that access hole we cut in there. And if I manually spin the motor, you can see what it, likes, what it looks like for that little coupler there to move. So again, anytime the motor spins, that coupler is spinning, and the driven shaft and the transmission spins. Now keep in mind, I've still got neutral and all the gears in that transmission. Now, whether you do a two-part coupler or a single solid coupler, you're still going to have to take some measurements because you're going to want the position of the electric motor, the thickness of the adapter plate, and the transmission to match up with the length of the drive shaft the driven shaft in the coupler. That way when everything's all bolted together that coupler is not going to be able to slide around but uh, both the the motor and the transmission are going to bolt together nicely. And since I went through all the trouble making that two-part uh, coupler only to have it end up failing on me I wanted to make sure to really do it right the second time. Now the first time I didn't even have an engine hoist to uh, lift the motor up into position, but by the time that I was working on the second coupler, I now had made some new friends who were into electric vehicles, hot rodding, and a whole lot of other fun do-it-yourself sports. So they were able to give me a hand. And what we did was we set up the motor on the ground in my garage, and we set the transmission right on top of it with the adapter plate. That way we were able to get very, very exact measurements. And in my case, the one shaft was still just a little bit too long, so we used an angle grinder to grind it down just a little bit until we got to the point where the length of the shaft and the coupler all matched up exactly right for the motor and the transmission to all come together. Then we spun the motor using just 12 volts so it wasn't spinning too fast, but enough that we could move the transmission around just a little bit and find out where that exact, exact center was. Once we'd found that, we slowly tightened down the bolts all the way around and that way we knew that everything was perfectly centered, it was perfectly torqued, and it was one nice solid unit of the motor and the transmission together. Now since my friend Rich brought over his engine hoist, we were able to pick up the motor, the adapter plate, coupler, and transmission all as one big piece and drop the whole thing down into the car. So now there wasn't any worries at all about anything being misaligned. Everything was uh, perfectly lined up, bolted down tight and ready to go. Then it just had to go back into the car, put the bolts through for the, uh, uh, all the points that the engine and transmission mount to the frame of the car, and put the drive axles from the wheels back into the transaxle.